Hi guys, here's a very nice Amiga 1000 uh, that I picked up non-working for $15 and I didn't know what the problem was. Um, it's uh, in very good condition uh, externally and internally in fact. Um, probably the best uh, example I've seen. It's a 30 year old computer. Been very well looked after. Um, doesn't have any of the yellowing that you'll get on these uh, beige cases. Also came with the external drive and also two keyboards and two mice. Having fixed it, uh, that's a, quite a bonus. Um, so, I'll detail the mod later, but um, it actually came with um, a Bung RAM or it's um, ROM, one of the two, I'm not sure, but the RAM that would have been Bung would have been the 256K, uh, what they call right control store RAM, uh, and that uh, is, is 256k of RAM uh, just responsible for holding the contents of the kickstart disk uh, because the unit doesn't have a proper kickstart ROM. So when I turn this on it'll uh, boot straight to the insert workbench screen for version 1.3 uh, because it has a ROM now installed from a Bung uh, Amiga 500 that was scrapped um, so you get to bypass the whole uh, kickstart 1.2 insert disk blah 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 There we go. Um, so I actually prefer it this way. <laughs> so um, I haven't got the keyboard and joystick and mice plugged in, but yeah, you go. You just in, uh, put your uh, game disc in from here. I might as well at least uh, prove that. Um, this has a uh, crack tray at the start of it. I won't be able to go past that without the, the mouse and other peripherals, but uh, yeah, we can already see um, the little crack tray happening. You'd normally uh, press the mouse button and you have a trainer and then you're into the game. So um, this video I'm going to describe how I, how I did that mod. Um, so I didn't actually fix the problem at all, um, but I just kind of prefer it the way it is. Uh, the only really the fix that I did was just the uh, kickstart mod. Um, so it still probably has some bung ram or bung rom. Uh, the unit originally has a uh, rom uh, it must be very small, something like uh, 128k or something like that, but um, it does have two little ROM chips, otherwise, you know, where's it going to get this picture from or know to boot from a disk in the first place? But anyway, uh, let's get into it. Now, the reason I knew there was a problem with uh, ROM in the first place was I simply saw this turquoise screen, which is uh, documented to have that meaning. If you've made it this far into the video, you'll probably already know this is part of a diagnostic self-test. If you turn on just about any broken Amiga with enough guts working to show a screen, it'll uh, give you an idea what's wrong uh, with the colour instead of booting. So here's the link for the original uh, blog that I followed for the modification. Um, it's actually in German, which is the whole reason for doing this video uh, in English. Um, just to uh, clarify some things uh, that I could have got confused on. Um, especially, uh, this is, uh, I think, laid out for beginners, and it's probably even more confusing if you're already an electronics hobbyist to follow these instructions. Um, so, yeah, the fellow wanted to make a kickstart switcher. Um, so he's got a, he can switch between uh, load kickstart from disk, uh, as the machine would originally do, or uh, from a, an installed uh, kickstart ROM. Uh, probably the same one I'm using from an Amiga 500. Um, so you can go through a translator and individually translate these paragraphs uh, from German to English, and it is quite readable. Um, uh, one of the gotchas here, this red line doesn't actually exist at all in, in the modification. You don't want to do that, so uh, I think it was a bit of a a silly mistake to actually draw that as an example. You probably would have been better off doing a, a, a real part of the wiring. Um, and that does say that in this red writing that it, it's not an actual connection from one chip to another. Um, the second problem that I see uh, for beginners, oh, sorry, for <laughs> a hobbyists with some experience is the IC numbering for the DIP packages. We've got the processor and the ROM here. Um, we usually start numbering, counting from one uh, anti-clockwise around the chip, 
uh, from the uh, notch here and you'd have a, um, a little dot on the package. The same here, you'd have a, a dot down here for pin 1. Um, and so yeah, the author's just lined up two chips with pin 1 facing in opposite directions and come up with his own numbering scheme where you'd have um, column 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Column 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. And then with the ROM, uh, it's lined up with the notch facing up. And then R1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. And then R2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's okay if you print this out, uh, orient the chips in the same manner as this diagram and follow these instructions. But uh, then you do have to forget about uh, counting with uh, conventional, uh, conventional IC numbering because um, then you'll make a bad mistake. So the intention of this video being uh, to provide some English support for the original German article, I'm going to follow uh, the original uh, numbering scheme from the article. And this is the first connection across the CPU and it connects both the ground pins. From here, it's just a matter of following uh, two quite large lists of interconnections between the ROM and the CPU. And the lists reference the ROM and the connection that is made to one or the other side of the CPU, which uh, can be different, so be careful. You'll notice here that connections from one side of the ROM can connect to either side of the CPU, so just watch for that second column. Now, the night I actually did this, I wasn't sure I was fixing anything, so I made a mess and piggybacked the kickstart chip to the CPU. But at least that mess can be fixed. I can go back and make a circuit board that's socketed and uh, do the job properly, and uh, knowing that it's going to work. This can be done a lot neater, though. Uh, this is the original uh, post, Facebook post uh, that alerted me to the mod, and uh, you can see this guy tried. <laughs> Speaking of the condition of things, how's this silver bullion? Uh, I can only conclude that this 30-year-old thing was stored in outer space for its whole life. This caption uh, from the original German article describes uh, the only modifications that are needed to the Amiga mainboard. And uh, the, the part in red is for the original uh, machines that have a piggyback board for RAM. And uh, the blue gives the, the IC numbers for the main boards that are all in one single main board with no piggyback board. My particular model is a, a single uh, board Amiga and uh, the connection is made to pin 19 of chip U4S. And that pin 19 is of course where the chip select line goes that was left dangling from the last part of the mod. The last two steps are pretty easy. Uh, just cut pin 17 of ICU6N and leave it disconnected and connect a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor across pins 1 and 20 of ICU3J. Now bear in mind the original article is giving details on a ROM switcher but I've simply ignored that because I still assume my WCS RAM is stuffed. Here's the best of the two keyboards that came with it. Um, it is quite white but it didn't fare quite as well as the computer itself. I'm not sure if it's going to come out in the video. Uh, it has got a bit of browning uh, towards the front of it. Um, so I am going to hit it with the uh, retro bright treatment, give it a bit of this. Um, no need for a video about that because there's plenty of them out there. But uh, basically you just need any product with uh, hydrogen peroxide, douse the thing, put it in the sun and away you go. One of these is certainly nicer than the other, but I think I'm going to start with the nice one. Uh, this one actually I don't think needs anything done to it, uh, the nicer of the two, so I'll just leave it the way it is. Anyway, that's that. Good luck with your uh, A1000.